everybody welcome back I uh, got a quick um, my order from Hobby Nut which has been here for a while and I forgot to make a video so I want to do that uh, show you some other things that I got um, yeah pretty cool stuff so uh, first off this has been waiting way too long as well my friend Larry Parr from out in California he sent me a Highway Pioneers kit not long ago. Um, I think it was the Mer what is this one? Yeah, I believe it was the Mercedes kit here. Um, this is another one and it is a super old, let's see, 19, I believe it's 1950. This is your early Highway Pioneers kit, 1953. Uh, this is the Jaguar. And this is the uh, acetate type of plastic. I forget the proper word for it or the complete word. But anyway, it's the acetate. It's not styrene. It was prior to styrene or prior to Revell using styrene. I don't know when styrene actually, polystyrene was, was started to be used. But this is that kit. I would like to know how old that $5 um, price sticker is. That's pretty neat because they go for a lot more than that now um anyway this car which larry sent a note as well he said some of his club members i think are the ones who told him that if you paint this stuff it uh it's less likely to to warp on you i hadn't even looked at this one yet so it's, let's see oh wow very nice I don't see any warpage on this body at all. It's really cool. I might can build this one and uh, yeah, on the bottom here it says uh, 1953 Jaguar gallon and gallon. Copyright 1954. Okay. So this one would be super simple. Just a little curbside. Man, you gotta love this sound. This crinkly old 1954 plastic bag it's got a little figure that goes in it this kit looks to be in super super good shape there's the, the um, windshield frame got the got the tires and wheels here and uh, because it's not like I say you can tell the difference if you get one of these old kits just yeah, obviously you can tell that's that's not the sound of styrene that high pitch noise that you get from styrene but this looks like number one it's a single piece body and it, it I, just, I just i don't see any warpage very cool very cool let's take a look at these old instructions real fast i just love this kind of stuff instructions it's super simple little kit there's no glass but that looks like that would be something that would easily be done I've got some leftover uh, sheet plastic from that highway pioneers um, Renault that I built that would go right in there cut it to fit and then all the the ones offered man this stuff is so cool can't wait to one day get the get the model room built and get get this uh, in there look at this i've seen these for sale before had all like 10 in there those go for like huge money and then there's one with uh it's like maybe five 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 you can get those pretty reasonable that are um mini craft yeah mini yeah i believe that's what it is yeah mini craft redid the highway pioneer uh sets probably back in the mid early to mid 80s and um, you can get those and they're in great shape they're made out of styrene but I want to say again thanks to Larry really appreciate it for thinking about me and sending me that that's really cool so that's the 1953 Jag XK120 thank you Larry all right uh, next go through some of the other stuff before I get to the hobby nut uh, my mom 
I mentioned this on a video recently. My mom was at Hobby Lobby and she just happened to walk by and see a model kit. And, uh, and I mentioned this in an earlier video, but she, she got me two of these. So I had them for $7.49 at Hobby Lobby on clearance. Pretty cool model kit. Ruthie built, uh, I think her first car kit was this. She built the ship. And then she built, I believe, this car kit, and that was that was fun. So yeah, I got that one, and I actually got got two of those. Got that one, and I got this one. Same thing, obviously. So two of those, seven dollars and forty nine cents a piece. And then she was, she also, said, she said they also have this big rig semi trailer. <laughs> and I, I don't really, it's obviously semi trailers. I, I think she just misspoke. They had that for a $39.99, had it on sale for $10. Bucks. I have no use for this at all, but I told her, I said, I'd, I'd like to have it anyway, just, you know, if somebody's interested in a in a tractor trailer. I believe this is going to go back and be your IMC. Um, would have what this would have originally been. You won't believe how heavy this box is. I am, this, this thing is super heavy. I wouldn't think that just having a few flat panels, well, eight flat panels. Well, I forgot it's got all the tires and everything. Man, this thing is so heavy. Uh, it weighs probably three times what a model kit would weigh, if not more. But anyway, yeah, I got that. And uh, like I say, I, I, don't, I don't have a use for this, but anytime you can get a model kit at such a reduced price, it's, it's worth getting, you know, somebody else may be interested in it got that and then i was at ollie's i went by just today saturday me and heather went on thursday evening and i uh, thought maybe they had had some more uh, different model kits but they they had a few a uh, few that i just wasn't interested in but they had some more of these so i got another one of these i had one already i just think it's a cool looking car uh, i despise this model of Camaro and Firebird when I was younger, but now I really appreciate them. I think it's cool. I just think it would probably make a really cool Pro Street or something like that. And it's 124th scale. Oh, no, it's not. It's 125th scale. Interesting, right? So it's a monogram, which monogram is always known for 124th scale stuff. There was a few that wasn't, but it was usually they're using somebody else's molds. Like recently I got a, I can't remember what the car was, but it was a a monogram kit but it was 125th and it was an older kit from the early 80s maybe late 70s and that it was an old aurora kit that they repopped uh, monogram did and so now this is a 125th scale and it's a monogram kit so it's it's funny how obviously monogram was uh was bought i think by uh Ravel. and then i don't know what happened after that because i think Ravel went bankrupt and now there's Ravel Germany and there's a Ravel USA, but it's Ravel something something USA. I don't know. So I'm not sure if Ravel actually, yeah, well, it, it does actually say it right there. I'm sorry. It says 2023 Ravel GMBH. Have no, okay, that says Germany on there. So I guess Ravel Germany owns the monogram brand, probably. I don't know. Just making a, just an assumption. But anyway, I got another one of those. Thought it was cool. So, Heather said, why do you want another one? I said, because if I build one, I want to have another one on the shelf. She just kind of shook her head. Do we all get that? All right, so. Um, go through the paint. I got quite a few new MCW. I don't want to bore you with the paint colors, like showing you everyone, but I got a Ferrari red, a Surf green, an F8 green, Grabber blue, Coral. Another F8 green, Kodiak Brown, another Grabber Blue, Burnt Amber Metallic, which is cool. I painted Ruthie's uh, Pumpkin Mobile, actually. I think the fenders are Burnt Amber Metallic. Where is her? There it is. It's back there. Yeah, I think the fenders on that truck are Burnt Amber Metallic. Very nice color. Uh, Rangoon Red, cool red color right there and a guards red i like red stuff i mean i think it's nice i think it looks great on model kits but i think white does too and then there's a silver jade metallic 
also picked up two more bottles of the Green Stuff World Airbrush uh, Chrome Metal. They may, he has it in the Airbrush and the Brushable. Um, I tried spraying the Brushable through my Airbrush. I'd heard that worked. Didn't work well for me at least. Maybe because I use a .35 or something like that nozzle for everything. I don't ever change it. Maybe I could have upped it to a .05 or something like that and got the results. But anyway, the Airbrush stuff shoots wonderful through the Airbrush with the uh, point three five or point zero three five, whatever it is. You guys are better at that than I am. Got another bottle of the Tamiya Extra Thin. This is, I don't know what we did before this stuff, honestly. Um, I remember the old tubes and I hated that stuff. It took longer to set. This stuff is almost instant. It, I don't know what kind of, it, I use two kinds of glues, this and super glue. Those are the two glues that I use. If it's bare plastic, it gets this. If it's painted plastic, it gets super glue. Or it, well, actually, I'm sorry. I also use the UV glue now. Th forgot about that. That's, that's brand new to me. But um, yeah, this stuff almost welds welds instantly. It's Unless it's got some tension on it. If it's a part that you that just has to glue together, it's almost instant. It's so thin. And uh, man, I don't, I, again, I don't know what we would do without Tamiya Extra Thin. And then I got another bottle of the Instaset, Bob Smith Industries Instaset. This is what they call Kicker. I call it Accelerator. I don't know. It's, I don't know. Oh, it is Accelerator. Ha! Huh. I'd be dog. I didn't even realize that. But um, So I use my super glue. I mean, uh, I pour this into a, a dropper-like bottle. And when I when I daub a little super glue, I've got that little with a needle tip point and you just let a drop go on it. I used to try and spray it out of these, but it just gets all over everything. Um, so I drop it with one of those needle point dropper things. So that's that stuff. Couldn't live without it. Also prevents it from smoking up. Like if you were to glue in your windshield with super glue, which I don't recommend, but if you did and you just use the super glue, chances are you're going to have that white hazing. You don't want that. So you would take a little bit of this, put it on there. It goes ahead and cures it and there's no white haze. So, all right. And probably wondering why is that car sitting there? So when I built, this is my USAC build from uh, 2022 and which I absolutely love this car. I think it's, I think it's just so cool. I think it was my second 3D printed engine that I had ever done. It turned out really nice, but I just love this car. Uh, my friend Alan Qualls printed the wheels, which turns out are uh, Z-Force Model Works um, wheels. And I actually have that file and I, f I keep forgetting to print it. So let me know, guys, if you're interested in the, uh, the Dodge Rally style wheels like this. I have that file and I can print those. I've just forgotten to get around to it. So sometimes I'll have, I'll sit on these files until someone asks me about it. And I'm like, Oh man, I forgot I even had that. And, uh, if some of you guys are interested, I'll go ahead and get those, um, laid out and printed. And I need to do that anyway, um, because they are ultra cool. And, uh, yeah, just let me know. But yeah, anyway, back to this car. So I had this car um, when, when Mark Batson picked out the uh, 70 Plymouth Roadrunner. Um, unfortunately, at the time of his picking, there was not a repop. And those kits went for like big money. I saw them for $60, $50. I, I had bought this kit at a, at a model show for $10. So I already had one and I'm like, cool. And so I was able to build that one. And then after the, the, the group build had been started, they actually Revell came and repopped the 70 and it saved a lot of guys. Um, I think Brian Burwell or maybe him and BG both had problems with an original kit or something like that. And they were able to get the repop. So I didn't have another 70, uh, road runner. And I thought, man, I saw that on Mark's website and I got that. And uh, yeah, what what a cool car, man. And it is a Revell 124 scale because it's a monogram kit. It's not a Revell kit. Well, it is because it says it on the box, but you know what I mean. It's a, it's a, a monogram original kit. And uh, like I say, 124 scale. 
and so I got that and I'm like I was very happy about that I've been meaning to get one and I just keep forgetting about it but now um, that has happened so one other side note about 3d printing is this has the what's the 440 is that what it is yeah 440 uh, with the with the opening what's that called what's it called can I read it heck no I can't read it but anyway that thing would open up like when you floorboarded it or whatever vacuum would open it up um, I just got uh, working with a, a, a designer and I've got a file for a 440 um, 3d printed 440 uh, engine with the uh, 727 torque flight or um, I can also do the standard shift but most people probably like the automatic so I'm excited to get that hopefully by this weekend I'll um, be able to take and uh, get that engine all laid out and do some test prints take several test prints to get something right uh, because if you don't test it and you just think you got it right uh, you'll, you'll have issues as a matter of fact the other night or when I built that um, uh, black box supercharged uh, big block Chevy I noticed there were several issues with that and I've gone back and uh, gone back and corrected those those issues so the print will be really really nice when you get it but anyway yeah so that is that let's take a look at it real fast I'm just so proud of this thing except there was one fatal flaw that I didn't realize with the engine um, the engine turned out just wonderful thought it was so clean i opened up the uh there's no inner fender wells i just i just like that look i don't know it looks more like racy to me i did replace the firewall it's just slick and clean you know there's it's missing a bunch of stuff like steering parts and stuff like that but the only way i could get that engine to fit and the headers to work was to like absolutely destroy the front suspension but it turned out really nice homemade uh uh mufflers i made those that's a big piece of sprue you ever see some of those old model kits have a piece of sprue the big as big as your thumb that's what that is and i just uh took it on drill and i think i took my knife as the drill spinning and just kind of carved it with my knife and then uh drilled it out put some uh turn downs on it and i think it turned out really nice but yeah the engine turned out great uh it's a it's like a, a dragster engine though so like a top fueler it has no cooling system and I, after I built the whole thing, I'm like, oh, geez, it doesn't even have uh, inlets for the cooling. So I never could, like, put radiator hoses. Um, but it did turn out super, super nice. I was very proud of it. Did take a top 10 at the CKM Summer Classic last year. And unfortunately, they're not having that show in Clemens, North Carolina. This year, there was a an issue with the hotel, the hotel uh, that the show had been it I, I mean, that this is that was 20 years running for that show um and I, it may have been at the same hotel but anyway that hotel was had has new owners and somehow or another they did not were not going to let them have the show there this year so the ckm summer classic model show in clemens north carolina has been canceled for this year as from the last i heard i was speaking with mark batson just recently and he said it, it was it was confirmed that they're not going to have this year, which is super unfortunate because that was such a fun show, and I was really looking to go, uh, looking forward to going back to that. But it ain't happening this year, so hopefully they'll get that straightened out and uh, have it some other place next year. I, I like that. That is just a really nice show. I get to see a, a lot of my friends and stuff like that. So that's one of the things about shows is I get to go see my friends. You know, it's not like I can go see them locally because none of them are local but when you go to a show man you you get to see get to meet new friends too so that's that's always cool but anyway i'm going to end this video thanks to mark at hobby nut models guys if you haven't gone over to hobby nut models go check his website out it's always linked in the description of my videos mark is an outstanding person he is just such a nice guy and it's been a pleasure uh being uh being his a friend with him <laughs> being his friend him being my friend, that, that's more the pleasure. Um, but yeah, go check it out. Hobbynutmodels.com. Grab you some of this great paint, glues, whatever you need. Go check it out. Model kits. Um, 
go over and check out hobbynutmodels.com. And if you need anything 3D print, need anything. I did that last video, I think, if you need anything 3D printed. I do have people ask me while I'm on that stumble, uh, like, can you... I can't design anything. That's the problem with right now. That's where I'm at. I'm not a designer. I can't design anything. And unless I can find a designer that will work with me, I can't print their stuff to sell. I can buy their file and print it for myself. But I have to work with people that I can work with commercially. Um, so that can be quite the challenge. So I have requests to come in quite often. Can you can you make this? I, I, I can't make anything because I don't have the ability right now to, to do any design. If I could venture off and you know do this full time or something like that, uh, which is which is an absolute goal of mine, but that would probably free me up a little bit more to uh, try to learn the design part, start simple, right, and uh, and start going from there. But at this point, I can't design anything. But um, I've also had people ask me, can you scale an engine to one sixteenth, or I think someone even asked me just recently one eighth. Um, I can do that the problem is it's 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 a little bit of work to do that just for one and if the demand's not there uh i'll spend a couple of hours if not longer scaling something and then if only you know it's, it's really it's hard to justify the time that it takes to do that and i don't want to charge you guys some astronomical price for an engine um but it just takes a little longer. But if the demand for larger scale stuff keeps coming up, then I think that that is a possibility that I could start doing that. It takes a lot more space to store the bigger stuff. And that might be something at, on demand rather than uh, Ellie packs it up and it ships out the next day, if not the same day. Um, so keep that in mind. If you do want something that's a little out of the ordinary, like size wise, it might take a few days uh, for me to to do that so keep that in mind but uh, yeah if you're interested in that kind of stuff just reach out to me and if I, I get enough of these requests then yeah that's something that I'll move forward with but right now uh, it's 124th 125th stuff so anyway guys thank you so much my website by the way if, if you're new to this I haven't mentioned it mcvproducts.net and if you watched the beginning of the video you saw that I also carry the Protec line so if you want your Protec uh, detail parts I've got those as well so go check it out mcvproducts.net uh, all the 3d printed stuff I do obviously I don't make the Protec stuff uh, I work with Protec I'm a dealer of their stuff so anyway thanks guys for watching I do appreciate you uh, more than you know and um, I, I've been struggling to try and get more videos out um, and uh, that can be uh, I have a juggling act right now I'm juggling you just can't see it um, today Saturday I was putting siding on my house today been working on uh, rough cut pine board and batten siding I've been doing it now it's it's it, I'm doing a little bit at the time and it's it's getting hot down here and it's just uh it's a slow go so the juggling act continues um i never thought i could juggle but i've, I've figured it out and uh as far as making videos that is truly a passion of mine and, and building model cars uh they're coming a little slower now but i'm working on it but anyway guys thanks for your support thank you for supporting hobby nut models thank you for supporting mcv products ellie really appreciates it i really appreciate it and um yeah, I really appreciate all you guys. You're, you're just wonderful for watching these videos. Thanks. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. And hey, I won't keep you any longer. See you later. I got to get to work on that little 30-second Mustang right behind me. I think that's going to happen after I turn this camera off. All right, guys, take care, and we'll see you later. Bye.